everybody! As promised last week, I'm going to do sort of an overview of how I'm using the getting things done method uh, in my planner as of this year. I did a similar video last year, uh, last November, I believe, where I talked about uh, using GTD in my planner. And I've sort of been doing things similarly, but a little bit differently since then. And a lot of that has to do with being in rings. So let's take a look. Um, if you're not familiar with the system, this is sort of the flowchart of the different components that are used. So basically, you collect everything, anything that you know comes in the mail, your email, things that pop into your head in something called an inbox, and that can be a physical inbox. I do have a physical inbox um, that I'm not good at clearing. I kind of tend to leave things there um, because I don't have a really great storage system, but I'll get to that. Um, and then brain dump and stuff like that. So I, my brain dump in my planner is this very last tab here. Um, I'm just scribble things down as I think of them and then cross them off when I don't need them, like when they've been migrated to where they need to go. Um, and that's just one page before um, there's like a little divider here and then this is my blank paper in the back. So whenever I fill this up, I just get rid of it. Um, so that's what is in my inbox. It's circled yellow here because that means that I have one, but I don't make the best use of it um, or could do it better. That's what yellow means. Um, so if the items that you have in your inbox are actionable, or if they're not actionable, you can throw them away. I'm very good at throwing things away. In fact, I am too good at throwing things away. I tend to throw away mail and stuff like that that maybe should be put in a reference somewhere, but I don't really have a great system, so I, I throw things away. You know, like bills that are set on auto pay, I just toss them. I don't even open them. I don't know if, I sh if that's good or bad or whatever, but I'm not bad at throwing things away. Someday maybe list I do have here. That's in the first section, um, which I've explained in my system. The first section I have of my planner is like to-do lists, sort of. I flip through this when I need to decide what's going on to a weekly or a daily to-do list. So my someday maybe list is near the back of here. Here it is, it's in the middle. Um, there's a couple things on here that I've actually added to like current project lists or things that I've actually done. Mostly they're just things that are just there um, and I glance at this every week or so as I make my to-do lists and mostly ignore it. Um, and it's just sort of there as a place to put things that I think might be a good idea someday, maybe. Um, I will probably clean this up and delete some things as I move into the next year. I'll remake this list for the next year's planner, I think. Um, maybe update it every six months or so. Um, just to kind of keep it fresh and get rid of things that I definitely don't need anymore. And then, like I said, I don't have a really good reference system. I think I need to get myself like a filing cabinet. Um, I have not gotten around to that though, because we have a filing cabinet, like this was my husband's and it's full of a lot of his stuff that needs to be purged probably. But I, instead of wanting to sit down and purge his filing cabinet, I think I just kind of want to get my own and start using it. Um, but that's, you know what, that should probably go on my someday maybe list. Anyway, if your items are actionable, uh, then they can be for projects. So a project counts as anything that is more than one step. So I actually have two project sections in here right now. Um, my first one is general projects. Uh, this is done. I voted. I don't need my ballot research project page anymore. Um, I've shown most of these before, different product projects that I'm currently working on. Um, and then there is a divider, and then these are all of my YouTube projects, you know, video ideas and my video schedule and all of that. And then this next whole tab is for the, um, this is sort of a flow chart of the projects I want to work on. I was doing that earlier today as sort of a brain clearing thing. And these are some next, I, uh, well, I'll get to that next action items. But this whole section is for projects for a uh, technical writing career that I'm trying to kickstart. It's kind of slow going because I'm busy, but um, that's what this whole section is about. I may, when I set this up for the next year, I know I'm going to keep talking about setting it up for the next year because it's November and I'm itching for something new. Um, but I may start doing some of these projects in separate tabs in the back. Um, but for now, it's all kind of in one here and then one here. So a project page is basically anything that lists all of the different steps that you need to do. You can just be sort of a, a list of tasks. Um, sorry, I'm just going to show you one. 
Yeah, like here, I've got some tasks listed here. Um, some tasks listed here. I need to do some interviews. So a project page goes here. And then what you want to do is identify which of the many actions that need to take place in a project is the next one that you can do. You can have multiple next actions on one project. Um, but all of those I have on a next action uh, next actions list here for these particular projects for the, my writing career. Everything else, uh, my next actions list is the one that I was showing you last week in my plan with me video. So these are all actions that I can do um, from whether it's from a project page or just general things around the house. Anything that like I can do now without having to do anything else before it goes on here. And it's in yellow because I'm not really great at it. What I tend to do is I work off a weekly to-do list. I'd like to work off the next actions list and see if that works better for me. Um, so I'm kind of in a transitional period where I'm trying to find a good weekly and daily setup that gets the next actions list used. Because a lot of the things lately, the last couple months, what's happened is that I have put things on these lists and then I just sort of treat it like a Sunday maybe instead of like a next actions list. I'm not flipping here as often as I should or taking things off here as often as I should. That could just mean that I am more busy than I have paper for. And that's always, you know, that's probably true too. Um, so if it's something simple, you can just do it. I didn't circle this because it doesn't really go in my planner, but if there's something that can be acted on right away and it only takes a couple minutes, do it. You can put things on your calendar if it's something that needs to be done, but not yet. There's this section here is my monthly calendars. And so um, these inserts are great from Peanuts Planner Co. These are events and these are tasks. So all of these tasks, some of them you'll see have numbers and those are dates. So um, I pay the internet bill or I schedule it on the first of the month. And so I, you know, when I'm going through to set up my weeklies, I'll look at the whole week, I'll see, okay, look, there's events. Those are marked in colors and color coded here. And then there's tasks here. And so if I find a task that's for this week, I will add it to my weekly and get it done. And then uh, you can also delegate tasks, which is a good thing. And so there's something called the waiting on list, which I've got right here. Um, the reason it's yellow is because I kind of sometimes forget to put things, but also at the same time, I don't always have a lot of stuff to add to this. So I kind of forget that it's there, um, but I have used it pretty, I mean, better than I ever have before. This is the best waiting on list I've ever had before. So I do, um, I do get to use it sometimes and it's, yeah. See, the problem with it is that there's some things on here that I'm waiting on, but like I've been waiting for this for a long time and I think I'm going to give up on it at this point. Um, and so there's enough room on here probably to last until the end of the year. And then I will get rid of it when I remake this list for the new year. So that's pretty much everything. Basically the rings I found, I like one of the reasons I wanted to switch to rings is because I thought that it would go really well with the getting things done system. Basically because I can have these, um, project pages and I just get rid of them when I don't need them anymore. Like I don't have to have this sitting around in my planner. It's done, I voted, I can toss it in storage or throw it away. Um, and so I feel like I can have, I, because I don't have uh, extra pages sitting in here that I don't need anymore, I feel like that frees up the ring space, you know, the space that I have potential pages so that I can feel better about making a project page for something. If the question is, should I, do I need a project page for this or not? It's easier to err on the side of, yeah, go ahead, because I can just get rid of it if I'm not using it. And that way I feel just a lot more organized about my projects in general. And thinking about projects that way is like, it doesn't have to be a huge, like six months with goals and, you know, accountability and blah, blah, blah. It's just anything that takes more than one step is a project. Um, and so, I mean, I've got like game notes in here. Um, and a lot of stuff that I'm kind of, you know, working on some things that I'm not working on and they're all just considered projects. And I like that because I don't know, I feel like it, the rings and the project setup make me feel productive, whether I'm productive or not, we'll see. <laughs>
Anyway, that's how things have changed since last year. I'll link last year's video at the end screen. So keep watching for that. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in my next video. Have a good one. Bye.